So, Don, let's start there. You were in Washington during that mm -hmm. time. You see what's unfolding now. As people draw these comparisons, is it fair or too much in your view? Well, it certainly reminds me of the time when I was there and Watergate was going down. Uh, there has to be criminal activity, and so far it hasn't been determined that there is criminal activity. Uh, there's craziness, but you can't impeach someone, for, I don't think, for being crazy. Uh, but it's certainly the firing of Comey, as you showed on your uh, tape there. Uh, that made me think of the Saturday Night Massacre and the firing of Archibald Cox, and that was sort of the beginning of the end for Nixon. But the other thing that did Nixon in at the end was there were tapes that were incriminating, and there was uh, an incriminating sentence where he was obviously trying to uh, interrupt the investigation and delay the investigation. Or if they could get something like that on, uh, on Trump, I think he'd be in trouble. Which is interesting because Trump himself suggested that there may be some tapes in one of his tweets after he let Comey go. So who knows? We may yet see that. Right. Talk to me about that time. I mean, none of these things happen in a moment. They unfold over a series of months. At the time, did you appreciate that it, it would ever lead to Nixon stepping down? Well, I'd, not right away, but, the, you know, people would say, you know, it would be amazing if it turned out that something else had happened. And then six weeks later, you'd find out it had happened. And it kind of built and built and built. And uh, near the end, I, I didn't see how he could hang on. But there was, there's one other important difference. The Democrats controlled Congress, and he was a Republican. And so they were keen to investigate him, and they didn't care what was going on. They wanted to investigate him, and it turned out there were tapes and so forth. The Republicans control Congress, and they will be a lot less keen to investigate a Republican president. If after the midterm elections in 2018, the Democrats control even one House, then it'll get hot for Trump no matter what happens. But the real thing, I think, is will, was there any kind of criminality or was there some kind of... Uh, problem with the Russians, that he has some secret deal with the mm -hmm. Russians or they have something on him. Unless there's, I don't think they can, as I said, impeach him for being crazy, but if he has done something with the Russians that Americans find uh, un, un, unacceptable, then I think he's in real trouble. I mean, given your very long storied career covering politics, both in Washington and in Ottawa, what astonishes you most about what you're seeing unfold now in the United States? Well, I think that there's a president who uh, is so ill-suited for the job and that a lot of people thought probably when they voted for him, well, you know, he's just campaigning and politicians are always campaigning, but they're actually, when they get into office, they're much more reasonable and much more sensible. Not true. If anything, he's nuttier than he was when he was on the campaign trail because he's got all the levers of power to play with. And the other thing is this, this tweeting where he sort of, he seems to wake up in the morning and if he had a bad night or a bad dream, he sends out these tweets which are just incomprehensible and he's managed to alienate almost everybody that was an American friend. And uh, he hasn't really done it to us yet, but uh, I'm standing by, I think he might. It's something to watch, I'll say that. And so lovely to see you. Thanks, Don. The pleasure has been mine. Thank you.